Hey guys, and welcome back to Art Theory, the theorist channel that goes Kokoko for monster cake? I don't know. We're less than a week away from the release of Tears of the Kingdom, and I am so pumped to play this game, especially after getting that last trailer. I don't even care if every single one of my theories was wrong. I just want to play this damn game already. Speaking of my previous theories, this will be the last video in my changes to the main race series. So if you haven't seen my other videos on the Rito, Gerudo, or Gorons, go check those out after this so you can collect all the tiers for yourself. And phew, has this game had some crazy leaks already. Between the art book leak and now the game file leaking online? But don't worry. Your eyes and ears are safe here, my little colors. I won't be talking about any leaks or spoilers, nor have I seen them myself. So view with confidence, friends. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Tears of the Kingdom is almost out, and I think it would be so cool to reach our goal of 1k subs before its release. Thanks for watching, everybody, and let's get into the main thesis of this video. In the past, Ganon has made Zora's domain a target, between infecting Lord Jabu Jabu and Ocarina of Time to the Princess of the Zora being slaughtered in Breath of the Wild, not to mention all the times Ganon has frozen over the domain entirely. In Breath of the Wild, Calamity Ganon sends out one of his puppets, Water Blight, to take over Varuda. While the Divine Beast is under his control, he attempts to flood the East Reservoir Lake to destroy the dam. The East Reservoir Dam was built in collaboration with the Hylians hundreds of years ago. It was built in the unification of the two races, a symbol of their allegiance. A point of pride for them, if you will. At first, it made the most sense to me to center this theory around the dam breaking and flooding not only the domain, but half of Hyrule as well. But the lack of confirmed underwater exploration and the new evidence from the final trailer points this theory in a new direction. Zora's domain will be completely contaminated. From the most recent trailer, we see some sky islands that look uniquely Zora. While all the islands we've seen so far had very specific Zonai look, these new islands have blue tiles, intricate designs, and a lack of yellow foliage, they seem to stand out. Based on the positioning of Death Mountain in the background, these islands appear to be near or directly above the reservoir. These islands appear to have this tar-like liquid cascading down from an unidentified source. We know these aren't regular waterfalls, as those normally dissipate before reaching the surface. In some of the faraway shots, we can see those exact same streams flowing into the lake below. And since the reservoir flows directly into the domain, they are already polluted as well. The Zora race's design in Breath of the Wild is probably my favorite design update to any of the races. This iteration really captured the elegance and nobility of the Zora. Especially when you consider they almost went with this. Ew. The Zora don't wear much clothing to begin with, and their appearance is extremely unique. Their debut was in Scoured Sword, and from there they morphed into mindless enemies, but eventually the advanced race we know today. There isn't any particular group of people in history we can compare them to, but the closest I could find were the Japanese Ninyo, which roughly means half human, half fish. Which, yeah, checks out. Between their delicate style, intricate architecture, and strong values, they've always felt like a cross between elves and mermaids. The muck and toxic liquid cascading into their water will drastically affect the Zora's appearance. These mermaid people will look sickly and absolutely devastated. One way we can accomplish this is by mutilating their figure. Freshwater and saltwater fish experience different and extreme cases of growth and deformation when exposed to pollutants in the water. There seems to be a significant time skip in Tears of the Kingdom based on Riju and Tulin's appearance change. This leaves the Zora vulnerable and exposed long enough to pollution to experience heavy body modification. These could be present themselves as additional fins, eyes, or appendages. Besides story characters like Muzu and Sidon, the Zora all look the same which, with their lack of clothing, makes it kind of hard to identify and relate to. In creating a champion, we can see the devs experimented with different aquatic inspirations for Mipha. These growths could introduce a wider variety of marine life, like a lionfish head fin, or a mandarin fish's intricate colored scales. Any new combination could be really cool, as long as they don't mix my precious Sidon with a blobfish. We should be all good. In addition to irregular growths, I added tired eyes, large bumps and warts, and even some toxic muck stuck in their gills. I did want to add in some additional clothing option for the Zora that might help them with some of the toxins. I designed a mask for their faces based on the pendant on the Zora armor set. The shape of this lent itself to a gas mask shape with a breathing chamber and side filters. Even in dire circumstances, the Zora wouldn't sacrifice looking fierce, so we had to give it some bling. 
I doubt the Zora would be willing to leave their domain. It's their pride and joy, after all, and an artistic hub of Zora history. So the Maz are a good alternative to stay somewhat healthy while not having to leave their homes. Part of the not leaving will also be due to King Dorivan's health problems. In some, but more importantly, not all clips of Sidon in the final trailer, Sidon is wearing the Zora King's crown. At the start of Tears of the Kingdom, the king will be very ill, and at some turning point in their story, will succumb to the poison, making Sidon king. At this point in the story, hopefully we're able to help the Zora by stopping the waste cascading from the sky, and even researching and gathering materials for a cure. Let's move on to the domain itself. As I mentioned earlier, these islands with murky waterfalls seem to be above the reservoir. Even with the dam, the water from this reservoir flows directly into the domain and feeds a lot of the surrounding bodies of water. Looking closely, we can see that the liquid's texture in the reservoir and the domain are different from the other water textures. It doesn't have the same shine or light catching the ripples. It does have a few specks of light, almost like bubbles. To me, it most closely resembles the bottomless bog we saw in Breath of the Wild. The reservoir also seems to contain a lot of fallen debris from the Sky Islands. We might have to use Recall to send this debris back into the sky, stopping the muck from falling. Interestingly enough, this is a malice, or caused by Ganon it seems, and unless the Zonai had some kind of ancient beef with the Zora, it feels like an accident that the pollution is flowing into the domain. Since the Zonai are extremely technologically advanced, and there is an emphasis on power sources in this game, the Zonai might have used some kind of oil or burning fuels in the past. This can result in water pollution or tar, which in appearance is very close to the bogs we're familiar with. I drew the familiar domain we know and love, but added in some puddles and smudges of waste everywhere. What will they eat? How will they travel? These are all good questions that we'll just have to wait and see. But how will they sleep? The Zora sleep communally in water pools stationed around the domain. Since the water flowing through the domain would also be polluted, they don't have somewhere to sleep anymore. The Zelda dev team is extremely detail-oriented, and they even made sure that the Zora record all their history on carved stone tablets, since paper and water people don't mesh super well. Shh, we don't talk about Mifa's diary. That's DLC. So, I doubt the team would just throw their hands in the air and ignore the fact that Zora NPCs would have no nocturnal routine. To fix this, I added in an above-ground pool for them to sleep in. The closest example in the series I could use for this was the Water Dragon's Basin from Skyward Sword. I changed out the Water Dragon symbol for the Zora's updated crest, but kept the rest of the design. Just a side note, but has anyone ever realized how closely the Zora emblem resembles the Toxic Waste sign? Maybe Nintendo has been hinting at the Zora's downfall for quite a while now. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. We could see Zora carriers bringing large vases of fresh water from all over Hyrule back to their domain to fill this basin. We've already seen the Koroks traveling with large backpacks and Hylians in carts pulled by horses. So the theme of traveling and backpacking is consistent with our theory. This basin is much needed addition for the domain if they plan on staying in their home, while everything around them is polluted. Moving on to the main source of the contamination. I have good reason to believe that this flobbering, phasing mudfish is more than just a common enemy. Instead, I believe this is the boss we'll have to defeat in order to save the domain. Its size is massive, and a phasing through the ground ability is definitely too unique to be at the level of a common bokoblin. The location of the enemy also seems to be in an isolated arena, with the entrance being a dramatic arch. This feels like a classic Zelda boss room. Not to mention, but we haven't seen any of Ganon's influenced minions in the Sky Islands yet, just Zonai enemies. Besides this blue choo-choo, that is. But they're entirely created from water, so I'll give them a pass as to why they're up there. So, how did a giant malice-infected fish get into the sky? Well, it could be that this creature was already in the sky, and was infected by one of Ganon's targeted malice bombs. From the Zelda series, one giant fish would make a lot of sense here, and that is Lord Jabu Jabu, the Zora's worshipped deity. Jabu Jabu watches over the domain and the Zora people, but since this demigod is in present in Breath of the Wild, it would make sense that he is residing above them. It checks out that a fish god would be on these sacred islands along with the other godlike beings like the dragons. So Ganon wouldn't have to create a whole new enemy himself, just in fact an already powerful large deity in the sky, much like he did to Nadra in Breath of the Wild. 
their eyes are glowing purple and skin is consistent with the malice infection. So I basically tried to draw exactly what we saw from the trailer, but now I'd like to interpret Lord Jabu Jabu after we defeat his malice infestation. I wanted to update his cartoonish and comedic style for a more regal and sleek modern interpretation, but also try to match the general shapes of the ones we see on the malice sludge enemy. I made his body a little smaller and slimmer. I changed out the wide bulging eyes for ones that felt more dragon-like. I kept many of the same fins, but added in a shark fin to match the malice version, but also to fit in with the shark and dolphin Zora inspiration from Breath of the Wild. This has never been confirmed by the Zelda team, but the giant fish statue in Zora's domain always seemed like a homage to Lord Jabu Jabu. It doesn't resemble any other Zora, so what other giant fish creature could it be? Because of this, I'll also be adding in some of the features from the statue, since it could be based on the Jabu Jabu they know and worship from this timeline. I added in this corset shape we see from the statue and the eyelashes. Rather than just a two-thin tail, I made it multiple to fit the look. I kept Lord Jabu Jabu's headpiece from Ocarina of Time since it is so distinctive to the character. I did switch out the material from gold to silver and the star gem to green, since these all match up with the Zora's new color palette much better. I also added in some of the Zonai designs we've seen on this dragon creature, such as the fabric with tassels and this gold hairpiece onto their tail. This creates a nice blend of Zonai god fashion and Zora history. So there we have it, from the Zora people to forming and morphing into a variety of sea creatures fashioned with masks that maybe hit a little too close to home for the human population, to the polluted waters of the East Reservoir Lake and the Domain completely covered in sludge falling from the sky, and the epic malice-infected Jabu Jabu and his sludge-free DD version. I'm about to start on the final illustration, but I want to know what you guys think. What happened to King Dorothin in Tears of the Kingdom, and do you think that this sludge monster could be the infamous Lord Jabu Jabu? Let me know in the comments down below. For this piece, I wanted to add in lots of symbolism and try to capture as many of my points from the video as possible. I drew this angle of the domain to include the Sky Islands that would be over the East Reservoir Lake, the Great Zora Dam, Mipha Statue, Jabu Statue, the Freshwater Basin, and the water flowing through the domain. For the Sky Islands, I try to outline the general shape of the islands we've seen. Most of them are cut off or featured from weird angles, so I did the best I could to make my drawing resemble them and featured the sludge waterfalls. Then I spent far too long trying to get all the details of the Zora architecture that I'm probably just going to cover up in sludge later. I wanted to get Mipha's statue and the dam in my composition since both are strong symbols for the Zora, Mipha being selfless and elegant and the dam being unification of Hylians and Zora. Both would be devastating to see destroyed or defaced with pollution. I also wanted to show a variety of Zora with all their unique deformations. In the front, I drew a female Zora with the warts and tired eyes they all have, but also put a rather large fin inspired by the lionfish on their head. In the background, I have a green male with additional shoulder fins, lots of prominent warts, and an erosion of hip fins, which can also happen with fish exposed to polluted waters. You can see his being treated by an older Zora character wearing one of the masks we designed. Behind them, we see a Zora laying on the ground, probably too sick to sand, and another one carrying fresh water to the basin down below. Finishing this illustration up, I put pools of sludge all over the domain, especially on Jabu Jabu and Miva, to make the symbolism extra clear. So there we have it, our final illustration and theory. I hope we will be able to help our fishy friends when the game comes out in less than a week. Definitely let me know what you think of my theories and artwork in the comment down below. Thanks for watching you guys, and I'll see ya next time.